Jesus said, I am the light of the world. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness has never put it out. So good evening and a very warm welcome to you all, my friends, on this Sunday evening, our service of thanksgiving and remembrance, when we remember especially those that we have loved and lost, mostly in recent years. It isn't our normal service in church, but we're pleased to be able to make it available online. And I realise that many of you will be sitting through this service on your own, whereas normally you might have been able to have someone with you to have a hand to hold or an arm to go around your shoulders. And I'm sorry if you are enduring this time on your own. But I hope that through this service you will come to feel the solidarity with others who know what your pain is like, who know something and share in something of your pain. And I hope that you will have that sense of togetherness, of communion, and knowing that we are all enfolded in the love of God as we go through these dark and difficult days. So I hope you will find this brief service comforting and encouraging and strengthening. So let's begin with a prayer. Heavenly Father, you have not made us for darkness and death, but for life with you forever. Without you, we have nothing to hope for. With you, we have nothing to fear. Speak to us now your words of eternal life. Lift us from grief, anxiety or guilt to the light and peace of your presence and set the glory of your love before us through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And we have some responses. If you have been able to print off the service sheet, do join in the responses in bold with us. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where will my help come? My help comes from the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. Lord, turn to me and be gracious to me. For I am alone and brought very low. The sorrows of my heart have increased. O oh, bring me out of my distress. When in anguish of heart I cried to the Lord and called for help to my God. He heard me from his temple and my cry reached his ears. And it's with that knowledge that our cry always reaches the ears of our Heavenly Father. So we listen now to our reading very famous Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness. For his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of those who trouble me. You anoint my head with oil, my cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So that reading, Psalm 23, is one we very often read at funerals and it has been a great source of comfort to people, Jews, Christians and others, for over 2,000 years. The image of the strong shepherd, always with us, guiding and protecting us, supplying all our needs, is indeed very powerful and something I think we would all like to believe in. The vision of pastures green and rest 
by still waters sounds quite idyllic. But the vision changes as we come to the verse, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. There is a realism here, a recognition of the fact that we shall all, at some time or other in our lives, have to walk through that valley of the shadow of death. The long, dark shadow that is cast over us by the death of someone we love or the prospect of our own death. The image conjured up here is of a dark and lonely place where we feel we just can't see a way ahead. And we are afraid of the darkness and what might lurk in it, afraid of the unknown, the unseen, maybe even afraid of the depth of our own grief and pain and sense of weakness. Now the shadow of death has been hanging over the whole world during this time of pandemic and many people have been made to confront their own mortality for the first time and many have died without the comfort of family close by them and many have not been able to have the funeral that they would have chosen for their loved ones. It has been and still is a long, dark shadow. But the writer of Psalm 23 has walked through this dark valley already in his life and he knows from experience that the Good Shepherd is never far from him. Your rod and staff, they comfort me, he says. Note that he doesn't say, Oh, you pick me up and carry me along. The sheep had to keep on walking through this dark valley. The shepherd's rod and staff were used to encourage the sheep along, to bring them back if they strayed, to protect them from dangers on the way, to guard and to guide. The sheep just had to keep on walking trusting that the shepherd would bring them safely through, out of the shadow and into the light once more. Sometimes we can get stuck in the valley of the shadow of death. We almost want to stay there. We are weary, we are sad. We can't see the way ahead. We just want to be left alone with our pain. But our Good Shepherd is not going to leave us there. He will encourage us, give us a nudge, give us a prod, keep us gently moving forward. Very often he will use other people in our lives to do this, those who show us kindness, those who pray for us those who need us to be the source of love and care that we have been to them in the past, and those who help us to see that the valley of the shadow of death does not go on forever, that it does have an end. Psalm 23 doesn't tiptoe around the fact that life can be hard, that sad and bad things happen. But it tells us that human existence has a meaning, that pain and suffering are not the end, that they will not have the last word, and that there is a way through life's dark valleys. Our psalm points us towards the light, towards the sun, and gives us the assurance of the presence of our Good Shepherd with us at all times whether we are aware of him or not. And we can trust that as we walk with him, he will bring us out into the sunshine once more. Amen.
So now let's pray. God of comfort, we pray for all today whose life has been shattered by the death of a loved one. Help them to pick up the broken pieces. May they come to know that wounds can be healed, that broken hearts can mend. May they know the balm of your healing love on the raw wound of their grief. Lord, share our sadness and bring us healing and peace. God of friendship, we pray for all here today who feel alone and afraid. May they know that you walk beside them, guiding and guarding them, and leading them to a new place and a new hope. Lord, hold our loneliness and bring us healing and peace. God of love, we pray for all those today who feel frightened by change that has come upon their life. The world around us is ever-changing. Help us to grow in trust that although many things change in our lives, your love will never change and you will always be there for us. Lord, enfold us in your love and bring us healing and peace. Amen. Amen. And now I invite you to join with us in saying together the prayer that Jesus taught us, the Lord's Prayer. Our Amen. Father, who art, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. name. Thy kingdom, kingdom come, come. thy will, will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And so now we come to the time where we remember our very precious people who have left this life. And we're going to read out the names in groups and then light a candle in honour of each of those names. And maybe you would like to light a candle for your own loved one as their name is mentioned. Margaret Rose, Margaret Gunning, Glenn Elkington, Jean Burkett, Edward Gunning, Shirley Hanson, Frank Hanson, Monty Northern, Kathleen Mace, and Ruby Dean. Mike Peckett, Bobby Wallbank, Daniel Storer, Alfred Ward, Hilda Ward. Peter Ray Shaw, Nora Kathleen Shaw, Rob Shillito, Roy Picard, Nicola Banks. Linda Gray, Jean Staines, Roy Staines, David Murray, Mary Sutcliffe. Kenneth Woolard, Brenda Coates, Anne Crumblehume, Don Longmoor, Arthur Longmoor. Maureen and Arthur Leatherland, Jack and Kathleen Partridge, Gerald Partridge, Hilda Grimmett. 
Mum and Dad Powis, Stephen Denby, Christopher Denby, Jacob Denby and Oscar Denby. Joan and Fred Williams, Simon Robert Stowe, Molly and Eric Jones, Jill Major, Andrew Emmett and Judith Emmett. Muriel Chapman, Rachel Dawson, John Hugh Mason, Geoffrey Jessup, Frank Morley. Peter Sharp, Valerie Taylor, Isabel Naylor, David Ogden, Audrey Butterfield. Brian Wainwright, Catherine Robinson, Ben Ive, Terry Reed, Bill and Tony Cotton, Elizabeth Barnes, Olga Richmond, Graham Smith, Jeremy Hartley, and Baby Peanut, who didn't quite make it, Frank Morby, Jean Webster. Margaret and Cyril Davis, Betty Wilson and Bruna Burke. Ron Armstrong, Jean Armstrong, Jean Davies, Alan and Ruth Austin, Ted and Alice Duncan. Eric McGinn, Joe Bancroft, Len Murgatroyd, Maureen Calvert, and Tom Barling. Colin Jeffrey, Gabor and Mabel Fonts, Leslie Jackson, Hilda Jackson, Robert Jackson. Ray Samuels, Maria and Juan, Maureen Clayton, Yvonne Minnock, and Peter Wadle. Pat Pickles, Colin Lister Hargreaves, Gary Cunningham, Audrey Prater, Amy Maddox. Joan Smart, Shirley Reynolds, Bob Sugden. And then there's two ladies' mums, the mum of Jacqueline Binns and the mother of our local Oakworth lollipop lady. And there are two other mums whose names I don't have, but they will be remembered by their families and we just have a time now for you to recall and bring to mind and hold in your heart and in your love those whose names we may not have had on our list but who are still precious and then we we'll take a few moments just to reflect and remember with thanksgiving and love.
Gracious Father, we thank you for all who have gone before us and remember today those who have died. We offer you now our love for them, our memories of them, all the joys and the sorrows that we shared, our grief and our pain. Heal our wounds, mend our broken hearts. Give us, we pray, further strength to face the future and the assurance of life eternal in your love. Amen. Amen. And if you have the service words, you may like to join join us in saying our prayer. Hold my hand, Lord. Walk me through the loneliness and the valley of my sorrow. Hold on to me when I'm too afraid to think about the future. Let me lean on you, Lord, when I'm too weary to continue. Hold my hand, Lord, through the night until I see the light of dawn. Amen. So we close this brief service with a blessing. May the God of light meet us in our dark nights and show us the way. May the God of joy bless us with his message of hope and healing. And may we all be blessed by the knowledge that our Good Shepherd watches over us and will never abandon us. And may we all live in the light and the warming love of the risen Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. So thank you for joining us in this time of remembrance. I hope it has been helpful to you and I hope that we shall be able to be together again in years ahead in our own church once again. But if you would like to share this service with anybody that may not know anything about it yet, but anybody that you know who has been bereaved and who might find it helpful and comforting, please do feel free to share the link and let them see it as well. And so I pray for your comfort and for your strength and for your healing. May God bless you all. Good night. <laughs>